Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jeremy Birmingham, and this is Bermanology. Tonight, we are talking with Vernell Brown, the number nine ranked wide receiver in the country and a player that has a lot of interest in Ohio State. And that interest is absolutely being reciprocated by Brian Hartline and the Buckeyes. We're going to talk to Vernell about the relationship he has with Ohio State, his relationship with a number of top receivers around the country, and a lot more on the latest episode of Bermanology. So let's get to Vernell Brown III right now. Vernell Brown III joins us now. Vernell, thank you for taking time. I know life has been extremely busy for you in the last few weeks. Can you just maybe walk people through what life is like in the day of a top 10 ranked wide receiver? Because it seems like you have been all over the country in the last few weeks. Do you ever feel like overwhelmed by everything? Um, No, sir. I think just being in it for so long, uh, I definitely think I figured out ways to manage it and and keep it from being overwhelming, but I can't say it does get very busy. You know, you are a player. Your your father played at Florida. Like you, you understand this process. You know how how chaotic it can get. What do you do to prevent yourself from feeling overwhelmed? What do you have like a, a an escape? Was it, is it whether video games or you draw? I mean, what do you do to escape all of the the chaos? Um, I think just when I feel like when I feel like it's getting to be too much, I just, you know, put my phone down and, and kind of take a break from everything and just enjoy life in that moment. Um, Do you ever feel like kids in your situation don't get to be kids? Like it, it's not the same. Like you can't sit there on your phone and scroll through TikTok because your phone is blowing up the entire time. Right. Like if you don't purposefully put your phone away then you really can't do the things that kids in your in your world do. I mean, yeah, I definitely think you could. I mean, that is one way to look at it. But, I mean, the way I look at it, it's a blessing to be in this position, and, and those are good problems to have. So You have uh, – I, I don't want to count all of the offers you have. I think it's somewhere over 30, right? I mean, when did this really start for you when you started to get – all of these offers and and what was it surprising when it happened? Um, I got my first offer in the spring of my freshman year, and I remember uh, it's a video. I would have to find it and send it to you, but it's a video, and and, and I it was crazy, like it was surreal because that's what you work for, uh, that's what you dream of, and to finally get that first one, it was just unreal. But yeah, um, I think so. I finished my. Freshman summer going into my sophomore year with 10 offers. Um, after that, after my sophomore year, I had 16. And all the way up until this point, now I'm at 42. 42 offers. The one from Ohio State came, what, about 10 months ago, 11 months ago, after a camp performance in Columbus, right? right? I mean, that's a, a scenario where you went out and – this wasn't an offer based on your reputation. It wasn't an offer based on your film uh, at, at Jones High School in Orlando. It's an offer based on walking straight up to Brian Hartline saying, this is what I can do, and then you earn the offer. Does it matter? Does it mean more when, when you, that sort of situation happens? I mean, I think uh, they're all the same. I, I mean, just being able to go out there and, and showcase my talents in front of the coach, um, I definitely think that adds a, a level to it on their side of it but as far as for me i mean they're all the same uh, i know i know how hard i work and what i do and the time i put in to be in this position so i would say no they i mean they're all pretty much similar that camp visit was that your first time at ohio state or had you been there previously no that was my first time was so first time. that was last june i think it was june 15th you've now been to columbus four times since then or four mm -hmm. times total uh what what is it like for a kid from Florida uh, or how did, how easy is it to get comfortable somewhere else? Does that make sense? Because you've obviously been to Columbus four times. You've been there for multiple day visits. You've been there for in and out visits. You've been there for a game day visit. You've been there for a camp. Like, is it easy to begin to feel at home somewhere else? Or is there still a part of you that looks at it and goes, Oh, I wish, I wish this was like home. How does that work? I mean, uh, I just think going into it with an open mind kind of really helps uh, and just not comparing it to anywhere else initially, just, you know, kind of taking it in and taking it for what it is. Uh, I think going into it with an open mind, I think you can feel at home anywhere, no matter where you're from, um, just because you look you look at all the positives and 
and the way the situation is. So if, if it works for you, then it works for you, no matter where. Also, of those types of visits, which which one do you like better? Like you had this multiple day visit in April. You had the game day visit back in November. You had the camp visit. Which of those for a recruit? Let, let's remove yourself specifically from it and just say in general, which which of those types of visits do you think is most valuable? Uh, I think the camp visits for sure. Um, because, you know, not only do you camp visit in multiple day, uh, camp visit specifically because you get out there, you get to a chance to work with the staff, your position coach specifically, and you just get to see how they operate in the moment. And then you get to work with them and they get to coach you for a period of time. And then the multiple day visits, I say, just because you get to experience it, uh, not only what a typical recruiting day is, you get to see multiple days of it and just kind of see how it really is. I, I think I mean I, I'm not I'm not in your position nor have I been but I feel like the multiple day visits give you a chance to see a little bit more of what the coaches truly are like as opposed to like when they're they're turned on you know switched on and trying to make Absolutely. sure that everything is perfect you can see them when they're having a frustrating day with their with their own players you can see them when they're maybe not happy about something that happened with another coach or whatever so I think those are types of trips that really can can do a lot for you. I thought it was interesting for you that the second trip you made this spring uh, over the weekend of the, the Ohio State Student Appreciation Day. Mm-hmm. You no, know, we talked that afternoon in the uh, Woody Hayes Athletic Center, and there's a discussion about your position. You, you're listed, I think, at most of your profiles at like five, ten and a half. I thought you were the same height as I was, roughly, and I'm I'm six foot. So, I, I, are these? Was I just wearing the wrong shoes or? are you listed incorrectly on these things? Because I think people get confused about like, is Vernell Brown an inside receiver or an outside receiver? And uh, obviously you can play both, but where do you think that the, this concept of you being a slot guy comes in? Um, Honestly, I think the the biggest factor, uh, obviously the way I play the game, extremely dynamic. Uh, just, I have the traits of a slot receiver as far as play style and dynamic ability. And but I also had the traits of an outside receiver in terms of the way I attack the ball. I'm a vertical threat. Um, but I think the biggest thing why people kind of try to pencil me in the slot is my dad, because obviously a lot of people know him. He's played football, coached in it, and he he's a he's a smaller guy. Um, so just people not knowing me and not seeing me in person, someone who's never seen me but knows my dad, they know he's smaller, so they think I'm smaller as well. Until I mean. I can't even count how many times that people see me in person like, oh, wow, you're bigger than I thought. You're a lot bigger than your dad. So I think just their knowledge of my dad and knowing that he's a smaller guy, I think they think I'm a smaller guy as well. But they don't realize I mean, how much bigger I am than him. I 100% had that reaction. I remember saying, oh, you're bigger than I thought you were. I, I the, the Sometimes when all you see is like a the profile picture on a, on a recruiting website and the, and the size that's listed, which sometimes those camps or those – Numbers are from like two or three years ago. Like, oh, this, right. is, this is significantly different. That day when you were on campus last, Ohio State added a wide receiver from Desi jo- a wide receiver commitment from Desi Jones uh, in New Jersey, who I think might be more of a slot guy. Does that does that change anything for you in the way that you're viewing Ohio State, or because you can play inside or outside, it doesn't really affect you? I mean, um, I, I don't think it affects anything. As far as my perspective, um, I saw his commitment. I'm um, happy for him, but um, him and his process has nothing to do with me and mine. And um, at the end of the day, if we both decide to go to Ohio State, we're going to have to compete. So. You have a lot because you play for South Florida Express. It's obviously the most talented seven on seven organization in the country. You are uh, blessed to be flown around the country and play against the best of the best every weekend. That means you're lining up with Jamie French. It means you're playing on the teams, you know, with Jeremiah Smith and all these guys in the past. Like, how do those relationships and how much conversation is there between you and your peers about the idea of playing together at this at the next level or the idea of saying, Hey, I need to do this for me, or you need this for you? Is it is it hard to separate the the friendships from your own personal journeys, I guess. 
It's a hard to separate a friendship from my own personal. Yeah, like uh, let's talk are, about. Are you, are you saying like Jamie, for, for example, Jamie? Okay, Jamie, French, obviously, Ohio State it, it is one of those teams that everyone has talked about, and Jamie's a real uh, option for Ohio State and vice versa. It, it, and obviously, people put you in that same category. Do you have to start? separating things and saying, hey, I, I, you're my, you're my boy. I love you, but I'm, I need to go away from you because I don't want to be in the same spot as you. Or is there any of that conversation even happening at all? I mean, I mean, in a utopian world, I think we would love to play with each other at the college level, but I think we're both knowledgeable, knowledgeable enough and understand that. Uh, I mean, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Um, what's best for Jamie might not be what's best for me and what's best for Jamie might be what's best for me as well. But I definitely think just our friendship goes deeper than like, we're able to decipher what college makes the most sense for us uh, and keep that separate from our friendship. What matters the most to you? Like as you start to break down this process, you've got a a number of official visits set. I, I we've talked before and, it seems like you're pretty intent on, on going through with those officials before you make a decision. Um, although, as you've said, if it feels right, you you aren't going to be uh, slow to, to pull the trigger if it feels right. right. But like, what on the list of the hierarchy of important things for for Vernell Brown? Where what are they? Um, I would say the people in the building the most. Those are people you interact with every day. You're going to be with, even when football is not there. I would say the system as well. Um, offensive system obviously that's ultimately what it comes down to on the field being in the best place to make be in the best position to make plays and and things like that and then I would say just the the overall development uh on and off the field not only as a player but as a man um and then ultimately I think it's going to come down to where I feel the most comfortable at and where who do I trust the most to get me to that next level and for the next three to five years of my life how does how has Brian Hartline answered those questions for you in the previous four visits to Ohio State? What have you learned? What, what did you learn on the last visit that you didn't know the one previous? What did you learn from this one previous that you didn't know before that? Like, how are they putting together a plan for you that shows this path for you? Um, just getting to know the getting to know not only him and that staff as people um, outside of football, just continuing to build that relationship, and then on a more of a football piece, just continuing our conversations about how they view me and, and my position in that offense and uh, where they think I'm going to play. Uh, ultimately, that's that's the biggest thing that I'll continue to learn as I go up there and then getting a the chance to see him operate with his guys, not only one time, but on multiple occasions. Do you think that your specific era of, of high school football players um, – uh, I think that you guys are in the most difficult time of anybody that's ever gone through the recruiting process because of NIL and all the other stuff that people are constantly throwing at you. But do you have like a, how do you avoid getting caught up in the trap of, of worrying about things that aren't important? Um, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm a really disciplined individual, but I think my dad also helps me. Um, just with his being on both sides of it and his 40 year old understanding versus my 17 year old understanding uh, as a 17 year old, it's easy to get swayed by those things that may not matter. But uh, my dad's, his message to me has been, don't let the little things distract you from the big things. So I think that's how I've been able to kind of decipher through it and not uh, certain things just sway me and staying, uh, staying true to what my, biggest decision factors are. I think that's what helped me the most. Vernell, I have a 17 year old at home and she knows everything. So how does that work? I, you, you, you actually listen to the people that are in your home. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. wow. I might need to get some tips on how to, <laughs> how to make that happen once we get off the air, but um, t- take me through a weekend, a seven on seven work weekend with South Florida express. What are you guys listening to? What's the go-to food spot that you got to stop at when you're, uh, you know, on the road? What is it that that you guys do to get hyped up and ready for a tournament when you're in Vegas or Dallas or even at home in in Florida? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'll go over the, this Dallas tournament this past weekend. Uh, just we all flew in. Um, 
every every time we fly in and all get together, I mean, it's it's like we never left each other. Uh, I'll definitely say it's a really good brotherhood on that team. And then just hanging out with each other, um, going different places. Uh, I would say the go-to spot to eat is probably Huey Magoo's. We, Huey we Magoo, go there. where is that? Yes, Huey Magoo's. Um, is there one in Columbus? It's no. I think it's been big somewhere, wherever it's wherever it originated, but I definitely think it's increasing because uh this I know there are like it's like 20 locations opening in South Florida. Um it, it's it's kind of growing, but it's really good. Uh it's similar to Zaxby's and Raising Canes, but sure. the go-to spot for our team is Huey Magoo's. Huh. And then just hanging out with each other, uh enjoying each other's company. And ultimately getting ready to play the tournament. Ohio now allows seven on seven uh, participation for its players, and you guys have wasted no time. Uh, South Florida Express has always had a good relationship in Ohio with Ohio State, but this weekend, this past weekend, you got to play with Albert Hill, cornerback mm-hmm. from uh, Akron. I know that there's been some discussion about Tavian St. Clair, maybe uh, you know playing a little bit with South Florida Express. As you've gotten to know Tavian on these visits, I think he was on campus this this spring more than Ryan Day was probably. Like, <laughs> what what have you uh, what have you what have you picked up about Tavian that makes him the type of quarterback that would catch your attention if you you decided to play for Ohio State? I mean, obviously a, a really good quarterback, but I think the thing that I like most about Tavian is just how good of a person he is. Uh, very down to earth, humble, kind of like me. Uh, I think we got a lot of sim- similar uh, traits in our characters, so I think that's why I I really like Tavian and and I would definitely love playing with him in the future if I decide to go to Ohio State. I'm telling you, he walked down the tunnel at the spring game at Ohio State this past weekend mm-hmm. with his hair and, and tight dreads and those pit viper glasses, and I thought it was Justin Fields visiting because he looked exactly <laughs> like. Him. Oh, I was, I was totally confused. So. Last thing, you got official visits coming. How many do you know you're taking and what schools are are getting the certain ones and which schools are are you still thinking hey, I might be able to I might be able to fit that one in. Um a, guar- a guaranteed four those four weekends of, of May to June, I'll definitely be taking all four of those. Um and then the schools that aren't in those four, uh if I mean, if we can, if me and my family can make it work, then great. But if not, then you know, it, it kind of just is what it is at this point. But for guarantee, for sure. The Ohio State visit. Do you have the date for that one set so people can know when to be at the airport and and you know, throwing bags of chicken fingers at you? Or <laughs> uh, me and my family's finalizing that now. We should have all of that done in within the next week. Awesome. It's going to be a busy summer. I know you've already had a busy spring. These next couple of weeks are the downtime for you, I guess. But mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, that's right when you start spring football. So there is no right. rest for you at all. Um, but I, I can't imagine you'd want it any other way. You are um, really great uh, and really appreciate you taking time to, to conversate with us and give people a sense of who you are. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. No problem. I'm glad to do it. Everyone, that's Vernell Brown the third. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Bermanology on the podcast. Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one.